Hi, this is Dan Nichols of MichiganWeddingDJ.com, formerly Boogie Brothers Production. Well, I know this is YouTube, and uh, it's a big wide world out there, so I want to help brides uh, with how to make better choices when they're looking for a disc jockey, uh, for a professional disc jockey to handle their wedding reception. So I'm going to give you a few tips, and as a disc jockey of 18 years, knowing the business like I do, I think I can provide some uh, valuable information for you. This is just to help you out. Number one. Um, references and I'm gonna tell you it's great that a friend of yours had the DJ because that could be a great reference but remember people's tastes are different some bride might want to come into jock jams or something like that and think that that's the coolest thing in the world when the guy plays chicken dance and Macarena all night I'm not knocking that I'm just saying some people's taste is that uh, my clients tend not to be that so be careful on how you get that but I would say more than anything consider professional references um, other vendors, photographers, florists, well, probably not florists because they're not actually at the event, but photographers and videographers are good reference sources, uh, the banquet facilities themselves. But be careful here. Um, I, am, I have paid for to be in one particular venue to be on their reference list. The reason being is I probably get 10 to 15 jobs a year just out of that venue. But generally speaking, I will not pay to be on somebody's testimony, or excuse me, reference list. And a lot of the facilities now hand you these nice, beautiful books loaded with references of all sorts of different pros. Know this, the pro paid to be in that. So the pro that came up with the money to be in that book, the bigger company maybe, uh, is not always necessarily the greatest solution for you as a bride. So professional references, but with all those caveats taken into consideration. Because I will tell you, I will not personally refer a, a, another service, disc jockey if I'm booked, uh, limo, floors, video, photography, if I don't know their work, if I don't know those people as, you know, as individuals, as professionals, I will not refer them because I'm not going to put my name on the line to refer them. Uh, uh, the next way that brides and grooms hire uh, a disc jockey is through um, going out and seeing them. Bad idea. Here's why. And if you insist with me as a disc jockey, as a prospect that you want to come see me, I'll just say, okay, go ahead, come see me. But I'm going to tell you why. You can walk in on a great disc jockey that has a bad crowd or maybe just happens to be in a lull during that evening. Or you can walk in on a really lousy DJ that, generally speaking, couldn't play his way out of a paper bag. And know this, that when you see that disc jockey and you walk in on them, they're not a good DJ, but they have an amazing crowd because that happens once in a while. You get crowds that will come out and go nuts to any genre, any song. It could be a nursery rhyme and they'll fill the dance floor. So even a bad DJ can make that, can, can look great with that, with that type of a crowd. It's a disc jockey that can pull it out over and over and over again and turn an average crowd into a good wedding and a good crowd into a great wedding. Those are the DJs you're looking for. So consider that when you go to watch them, unless you do as some brides have done with me before, gone out and seen me three or four times as well as my competition three or four times and taken an average, because now it's all of a sudden a more scientific approach to hiring the DJ. One sample does not a good uh, science experiment make. That's a Yoda thing. Anyway, so with that in mind, uh, consider, consider that. About uh, price. People say, Dan, why are you more expensive than company X, Y, and Z? And the answer is real simple. Because I can be. It's supply and demand. The, mar the market bears down, that, that force of supply and demand is, is common in all markets. So whether you're trading pork bellies or gold or silver or disc jockeys, supply and demand, a very big deal. So with that, uh, I'm just trying to think of other, of other things, you know, other, oh, um, testimonials too. If you do uh, ask for some uh, references from a, from a disc jockey, make sure that uh, you do it this way. This is the big trick. If you don't happen to have a lot of professional references with them, ask them for say, Dan, can I have uh, three references from the month of August? Um, so like look back like a month or two and just say, could you give me three references from that month? And then ask, and then ask the disc jockey for that. And then what I generally do when clients do that with me, which is rare because most people are too timid to do that, is I will shoot them an email and I will, I will, cease, I will CC the, um, the, the previous client of mine, the bride that I took care of a few months back, and I will CC her or the groom, depending on who my contact person was over there. And I will ask them, hey, would you mind talking to prospect Jennifer? She's looking to hire me as a DJ uh, for the next year, uh, and she just needs some, some testimony from you. 
So those are great ways to hire a disc jockey. Keep that in mind. And I really wish you the best no matter where you are in the world and hiring your DJ. Uh, and also, you know, going to meet them at their at their home or their home office or their business office. That's also not a bad thing because sometimes you just need that comfort. Um, having been in the business like I have for 18 years, I can tell you that I book 90% of my business. That is nine out of every 10 brides. I book them right on the phone now because I've been doing it long enough and because I don't send out other DJs. It's just me. You book me, you get me from the initial sales conversation on the phone all the way through to the last dance. That's a value. And if you value that in a DJ service, then you know, then knowing that disc jockey uh, and being able to work with that DJ all the way through uh, should be important to you and you should pay attention to that as well. So anyway, hiring tips uh, for, a, for a wedding disc jockey. Uh, I hope those helped you out. And uh, michiganweddingdj.com, I've got a great report on how to, uh, what every bride better know to have a great wedding reception. If you scroll down the main page at michiganweddingdj.com, scroll down the main page and there's a little box in there somewhere. It'll say, uh, want my free report. Check that out. I got 17 tips on how you can have a better wedding reception. Things that uh, people aren't even thinking about when they, when they put together, uh, their string together their evening. And when I say that, I mean not thinking about from an entertainment perspective. So that's it, michiganweddingdj.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm shutting it off. <laughs>